Hi, welcome to the gym box. I'm Chrissy. I am leading you in this practice today. This practice is designed to actually help your mind clear thoughts. So in yoga, we are balancing mind, body, spirit. So we're focusing on the mind today. So let's get started in Tadasana. Closing your eyes, opening up your palms. Feeling your stable legs beneath you. Take a moment and just roll around on your feet. Let your toes spread and wiggle. Even lift your heels. And just roll around on the balls of your feet. And then take an inhale and feel your torso lengthen. And on your exhale, root your feet down into the earth. And again, so inhale, lift through the core body, and then exhale, root through the legs. So already before even moving in any postures, you're feeling supported, connected. So as you take your hands to your heart and set an intention for yourself, narrow that intention down to one word. So what is it that you want to experience in this class? The focus is mindfulness, but you're welcome to choose something different like, say, opening up to freedom in the body or letting go of a belief that holds you back from accepting yourself in this practice. So freedom, acceptance. Find that one word that speaks to you. See that word spelled out. So your attention's probably in your mind right now. So mindfulness, we're practicing looking at those thoughts, but take that energy or that word to your heart center. With your thumbs pressing against your sternum, let that word dissolve and let the feeling that that word would create in your body become apparent in your heart area, that heart space. So we'll come back to that one word in a little while. Let's start moving. So release your hands down, start to open up your eyes just to a half gaze, so it's just a real soft gaze. And then as the arms extend and you feel more inspired to lengthen the muscles in the face, you can open the eyes wide. Exhale, take your arms wide, and let's again come to closed eyes, hands to heart. So again, inhale, gaze down, start to open your eyes slowly, and then as the arms reach up to the sky, just gently opening up the eyes until at the top, reaching up towards the sky, you feel a lengthening in the face, in the arms, in the side body. On an exhale, turn your palms away and start reaching your heart towards me and fold your body in two. Nod your head yes and no. And then just let your head move around in some circles here and reversing. And then bend your knees, feel your legs get strong and supported as you allow your spine to just unwind. Just allowing your body to sway like a rag doll. And then bend the knees, reverse swan dive, come up to standing, inhale, exhale, hands to heart. So just in that short time, just notice your thoughts and notice if you your thoughts have, have to do with your practice or if they're kind of still in the kitchen or in the office. So it's just a practice. Don't get discouraged if your mind wanders, it's okay. So let's warm up a little bit more. Half sun salutation, inhale, reach to the sky. 
Exhale, full open dive. Inhale to a flat back. Your hands can be placed anywhere from the floor, the shins, the thighs. And then exhale, fold the body in two. Soften the knees if the back's feeling really tight today. And then bend the knees a little more to push off and stand up tall. Exhale, hands to heart. How did that feel so far? Good. Inhale up. Keep moving. Feel the space in between the poses. Standing forward full. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale to a fold. Bend the knees, push down in the heels. Weights back in the heels, inhale. And then exhale, hands to heart. So I will be using some Sanskrit words. If you're unfamiliar with these words, that's completely fine. And eventually as you continue to practice, some of these words will become more and more familiar. But it's just to keep the the essence of yoga alive in our practice. So if you hear the words just and you're not sure what it is, just take a peek and I'll try and remember to share the English word as well. We are going to come to the tops of our mats so that we have the length of our mat behind us so that we can start lunging. We are moving into uh, some classical sun salutes. So there's some lunges that we will perform as we move through this salutation. So inhale, reaching up to the sky, and then exhale, take that full open dive, lengthening the spine. Now step your left leg back, and if you're wondering why I stepped my right leg back is, uh, if I end up mirroring you, will I'll be cueing my left and your right, and vice versa. So right now, we're in a lunge. Right leg forward, your right, my left. And just feeling the back quadricep contract to lift the kneecap. Now place the hands on the earth. Step back now, other leg. And then drop to your knees to modify or keep the knees up and lower down through chaturanga. Inhale, open up the front body just to soft final extension there, and then exhale, tuck the toes, hips to the sky, down dog. Settle in, move your hips, wiggle your spine. And once you've created some movement in the body, find a place where you're feeling the stillness of this pose. So right now, you're holding the pose and just exploring the body with your breath. Explore your shoulder joints and your hips. Notice that there's tension. If there is, try something different. Root the hands even further. Look at the pads of the knuckles and press them down more firmly into your mat. And then bend your knees. Draw your heart toward your knees and hips up to the sky. Gazing to the hands, let's step up, other leg, and come into the lunge. My right, your left. Pull your belly in slightly so that you feel this connection to your core and you're not just settling into some unsupported lunge, okay? So we wanna feel muscular energy in the body so that we're feeling supported as we move into the joints and so that we're not overstretching the body. So shifting the weight back slightly to push off back foot, step up to meet left leg and reverse swan dive, come up to standing, inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. Let's go to the other side. Inhale to reach up towards the sky. Exhale, full open dive. So this would be considered a vinyasa style of yoga. Inhale, flat back. Exhale and fold. Let's go other leg this time. So stepping back, your right leg. My left, your right. Feeling that lunge. And then step back, your left and lower down through chaturanga. Also known as, as 
wanted to say dolphin. It's not do dolphin, crocodile. There we go. And exhale, tuck the toes, down dog. We usually spend three to five breaths here. So just allow your breath to slowly become more aware in your consciousness because sometimes we forget about the breath and we just breathe. You know, we just forget. Fortunately, it takes care of itself. <laughs> but if we can consciously feel the breath and move the breath into the body, we'll receive many more benefits in our practice. All right, so let's gaze to the hands. And other leg comes up. And let's stand together with both feet firmly underneath our hips. Forward fold. Flat back, reverse swan dive. Inhale to lift up. Exhale. Now look behind your right shoulder. Take a big step wide and face me. So it might be easier now if I cue. If it was confusing when I was cueing right and left, it's okay. Just make sure you get both sides evenly stretched. Hands to heart, toes are pointing towards me, heels back behind you, and then firm up your quadriceps. So you're feeling this contraction, not a locking of the knee, but a straightening of the leg. And then feel, if you have long pants on like me, pull up your pants so that you can see the soles of your feet, feel the pinky toe edges connect to the earth, and let there be a little bit of space under that arch, okay? So if we collapse into that inner arch, we're straining the inner knee ligaments. So feel really supported as you press the pinky toe edge down. So if I was right there with you, I would take my foot and press down on your, your foot to the, to the outside of your foot so you could feel that connection. So really get rooted there and then take an inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, fold your body forward. Inhale to a flat back, exhale to fold. So vinyasa is a fun style, and we'll go through that again. So we'll bend the knees and come up. It's a fun style because we can play around with different movement. There's styles too where there's a set series of postures, which is a great practice as well. This, this practice is more, uh, just allows you to just explore. So feel free at home or wherever you're at, if you want to hold a pose, if you want to move in a pose, say you want to move a little bit differently, you're feeling inspired to reach back further, great, go for it. Feel free in your body. Now take your hands to the earth and take your toes out to the sides of the room. And just start moving side to side. So we're just loosening up through the hips and the hamstrings and inner thighs. And then bend through the knees, sweep the floor, come all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands come to hips and just move your hips around side to side. Just explore any tightness in the hips. We'll be doing some hip openers today. Today is just a class of play, so we just get to play around. That's also a great practice for our minds, is just to play, not really have to think too seriously about our practice. We are turning into a warrior. Turn your body in a way where your right knee can bend, left leg is extended, and then when you feel muscular energy through the legs, extend the arms. So we want to feel that support, that isometric contraction through the legs so that our upper body is free to just move however we choose to move. Okay, roll out the shoulders. And turn your right palm up. Take an inhale and reach past your right knee. Exhale, reach over the body. Notice if that right leg straightens at all when you reach up. Keep that same bend in the leg. Back leg is firm, hugging the femur bone. And reach, 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 reach. Cartwheel your arms. Come into a lunge. Step back, down dog. Plank on an inhale. 
exhale down duck inhale plank exhale down dog hold and breathe so a lot of our poses I'm sure you've noticed are names of animals so it's kind of fun to think about how animals have inspired some of the postures in yoga my dogs do up dog and down dog every time they wake up in the morning so every time I see them I'm like thank you for inspiring us humans to figure out how we should move in our bodies to release tension. So feel that down dog, feel releasing of tension. If you're holding this pose and there's a lot of tension, do something different. Bend your knees, shoot your hips up, drop to the knees and come to child's pose and then explore coming back up. So you can explore different ways of getting into this posture, which we're going to do in just a minute. On an inhale, we're coming to a plank. And to modify this, say you've been doing this practice for a while, an advanced practice, that's great. We want to check in with our bodies though. Sometimes we need an advanced practice. Sometimes we can do an advanced practice, but soften the practice a little bit. So at any time, if you need a modification, the modification you would take here is dropping to the knees, okay? So honor that, even though it says advanced practice, if you need to, to modify, that's a beautiful thing to honor where we're at. So reaching the heels back behind you, belly strong, and chaturanga. Release the belly, roll out the wrists. Okay, so we are going through some tricep strengthening movements which is chaturanga and plank <laughs> several times. Reverse the circle. And hands right by the chest. So we're practicing coming up into plank from our bellies. So if we have any kind of swaying in the back, so for instance, like if I'm coming up into plank, and I have to kind of do this yanking thing here, I'm putting compression on the spine. So your practice is, if you feel super solid coming up with your knees down, your body's flat like a board, then great. If, you, if that's not challenging for you anymore, I invite you to tuck the toes, pull the belly button up to the spine, and come up to a plank. So even you can sense, I could sense that I kind of was hanging out in my low back as I came up. So it's just a practice, come down, heart comes down, hips release. So now let's pull the thighs towards the chest a little bit and then come up, flat body. Tough, right? <laughs> down dog, at least it was for me. I think when we're super engaged there, our triceps uh, aren't always used to being built up in this way. We're used to doing overhead extensions and kickbacks and all these different exercises, but how often do we come here and bust out like 10 tricep push-ups? Should we do that, 10? I don't know where that neighbor, number came from, but Maybe that's the number we're supposed to work with. So we're going to do 10 tricep push-ups. If your wrists are uncomfortable, take a quick rest, rest and shake them out, and then come on back. 10 solid tricep push-ups, knees down or up. Here we go. Breathe through it. Elbows back. Halfway there. Plant your hands. Eight, I believe. Nine. <laughs> Ten. Oh, okay. We deserve a child's pose after that. Now walk your elbows away from your hips. Turn your palms up. Hands go, come to shoulders and sit back. Inhale, come up. Let's come to hero's pose. Exhale, quick tricep stretch for each arm. One more set of five. 
pretend like you love me for doing this to you. It's good for us. Maybe you do, maybe you like that burn, that's good. If not, that's okay. Notice the, that's our mindfulness practice is when we're in yoga and we're like, ah, this, this pose just gets to me or this exercise or whatever we're doing. We get to practice just observing and allowing ourselves to uh, maybe get a little sense of the goodness that comes out of that, that practice, that pose, that movement. Here we go, five push-ups. Tricep push-ups, one. <sighs> Breathe through it. Strong body and down dog. <sighs> nice job. Inhale, right leg to the sky. Exhale, float that leg to meet the hands. Cartwheel the arms and warrior two on the other side. Do you remember we did this on the right side with the right leg forward, left leg back? We gotta do the other side. But this doesn't mean we're doing tricep push-ups on this side, are you so glad? <laughs> maybe not, maybe you're looking forward to that. You can on your own if you'd like to. We're moving on though. Warrior two. Spread your toes, your fingers. Feel that connection with your mat. Feel that connection with your fingertips reaching out and away. So picture that you are touching the side walls, that you're that expansive in the pose. That's one way of feeling more free in our bodies. So when we're visualizing, not just being in this physical body, but visualizing our presence spreading out in the room. Which it does, right? We can sense people's presence when they walk in the room without actually touching them or even sometimes seeing them. So just notice your energy in this pose. This is a warrior pose, a strength pose. So tap into the strength that you do have here. You may feel like, oh yeah, my legs could hang out here forever, even though my shoulders are tired. Or if your shoulders are feeling good here, then uh, they're probably stronger than mine because mine are burning which is good too. Circle around, right arm, and let's come to a crescent lunge on an inhale. On an exhale, take your hands forward, push off back leg, and lift your right leg up to the sky. Take your hands wide so that laterally you feel balanced. On an inhale, pull your right knee in. You're tucking your body up like a ball, and then exhale to reach the head away from those right toes. Now look at that supporting leg. Are you collapsing to the inner arch of the foot? Feel that lift up. Feel that pinky toe edge press down. Inhale to bend. Exhale to extend, folding a little bit closer towards that left leg. One more time, inhale to bend. Exhale to extend. All right, squaring the hips off. Bend now your left leg. You may need to take a rest here. If so, just let your weight come back into your right foot and move any tension. If you, if you get a cramp anywhere in your body, stop and release it. So a cramp can sometimes tell us either the muscle's tired or the muscle's fighting for space. So you can extend and lift. Say if your, your abdominals are cramping, then extend in the body. Same with the leg. If the muscle's cramping, extend and lift. Okay, here we go. So bending left leg. Take the arms wide and ice skater pose. Breathe. Love the shaking that's going on, if it is going on in your standing supporting leg. Like love that about your muscles, that they're working for you, supporting you in this beautiful pose. Hands come down, one more kick up to the sky, splits down with the right leg to meet the left and just bend through the knees, drop the hips. Oh yeah, that left leg's feeling it, right? Inhale. Don't close your eyes, you might fall over like I almost did. Exhale, shake out the body. How are you doing? Good? Awesome. Let's take another wide step out. 
bend the knees. Yoga squat, inhale, goddess pose. Bend the elbows, palms to the sky. Engage in the shoulders. So you wanna feel, let me turn around. You wanna feel this reaching out and away with the scapula up to the sky as you reach. And then as you bend, shoulder blades plug in. So you're pulling the shoulder blades together towards your spine and then tuck those shoulder blades down into your back pockets. Again, inhale to release. Exhale to come down, palms up. Good, stay there and breathe. This is a cool pose. Love this one. Inhale to reach up to the sky. Exhale to rotate towards right leg. And here we go, other side. Come into a ball and bring that left knee into your heart. And then exhale, shoot it away. Make sure there's no tension in the neck. So you don't want to be yanking the head up. Let the head be heavy. There's no need for tension in the back and the neck right now. Inhale or ever, right? <laughs> Exhale. That's what we're doing in here is releasing all the unnecessary tension that we've created in the body. Inhale to bend. Exhale to straighten. Really reach. Feel the crown of the head. So the head... Head is heavy because the crown of the head's reaching to the floor, right? To the earth. And then the toes are reaching towards the sky. One more time. Inhale and exhale. Extend. Hold and breathe. Splits in the air. Really just love where you're at. So yoga is not about comparing poses. So you're not comparing your pose to my pose. I'm giving you a path that you're welcome to follow, a way to um, maybe see where you can go with the pose. But if your leg's down here, fine, that's great. If you're feeling your body work, you're feeling the lengthening of the muscles, that's fabulous. All right, so ice skater pose, are you ready? If there's a lot of tension in your right IT band, take a minute to really release that leg so that we can hold ice skater pose and rock it out, right? Okay, so rocking out that ice skater pose, bend the supporting leg, left leg, <clears throat> or right leg, left leg is extended, nod the head, yes. Now there is some muscular contraction going on in the neck so you can focus your gaze, okay? So we're not just like hanging the head here. When we take the hands away, we wanna have what we call dristi. We wanna have that, that focus and that gaze, okay? So look at the inner arch, lift it up, are we ready? Yes, we are. Coming down, oh, what could be funner than that pose? Inhale, lift, oh, and exhale. Just let your body just do what it needs to do to release any tension. Just a movement. Sometimes we feel like we're always needing to be here or here. And, you know, it's okay to just like shake it all out. Okay, doing awesome. Let's keep going. Check in with your body. If you need a drink of water or towel off, feel free to do that anytime during class. All right, we're coming to the, the top of our mat at this side and reaching back up towards the sky. Exhale, this time interlace the fingers or grab the forearms and come forward. Chest expansion. Explore the neck, releasing. Feel the breath, inspire the fold. So before you even fold, see if the exhale is allowing and opening up the hamstrings for you before you start just dropping into a fold. So hold in a place that's pretty comfortable. Feel the breath and see if the breath will guide you into the pose versus you mentally thinking you need to fold more.
Release the hands down, scoop the floor up for more energy, the earth. Earth energy is energy that's grounded, rooted, connected. You feel solid and you feel centered when you connect to the earth. So let's do more of that. That feels nice. Scoop down, gather up some of that energy where you, where you feel connected and centered. Exhale. Couple more times, inhale and exhale. One more time, big scoop. Fullest inhale, you can take the biggest inhale of the day and then exhale, take your hands to your ribs. Inhale to expand in the ribs, the biggest breath you can take. When you feel like you're full with breath, take one more sip. That's it. Exhale, knit the ribs together. Inhale, feel a connection to the core. Feel from your pelvic bone all the way to the top of the rectus abdominis muscle. Feel a, a slight pulling in, not a really hard contraction, but there's just like this subtle support that's happening in the belly. With that, lengthen that support and then take your hands to your hips and open your front body. Inhale to reconnect to that midline, rectus abdominis, and then exhale. Hands can slide to the glutes, down to the hamstrings. Inhale to come up, exhale to release in the back, round of the back. So are you up to back bends today? You're like, I don't know, maybe. That's what we're doing. So back bends are energizing. We've opened the hips some so that uh, <clears throat> the hips, when the hips are more open, then we can decrease our chance of discomfort in the low back. So hips feeling open. Let's take that inhale once more and exhale. You use as much support as you need with the hands. You can stay at the tops of the glutes and receive a wonderful extension. And you can also slide the hands down. If you feel any pinching in the low back, come back up. Take your femur bones, your leg bones forward. Don't even worry about lengthening the low back right now. Just take the femur bones forward. Tuck the tailbone. Even do this with your hands. Have your one hand press your belly in. Other hand press your sacrum down and then feel the scapula hug underneath your heart. So right here, this is the back bend, an extension of the spine. So let's see how much more space we have to move into. So we can reach the arms up, and then if we feel like, again, we need that support, we can give that to ourselves. Inhale to come up. Exhale to full, release in the back. Let your body hang like a rag doll. And then take your hands to the earth, hop, step, or jump back to a plank. Lower down through chaturanga. Inhale, undulate the spine, up dog. Shoulders back. Exhale, tuck the toes down, dog. Looking to the hands. Draw one knee forward, other knee forward. Take a moment and check in with your intent for class. What was that word that you were inspired by when you set your intention for your class, for your practice? We just wanna check in, make sure we're still in line with why we're doing this, right? Slide the hands back, and we're going to start out with camel pose. So we want to feel the knees pressing down into our mat. So as soon as the knees lift, then we need to lift the torso to reconnect the knees, okay? This is one way of getting into this posture. So just start lifting the hips. This is uncomfortable for the knees because of uh, the ligaments. 
then come up this way and then move into that back bend here. That will be less pressure for some people on those ligaments. And then the, the key here in keeping the knees comfortable is you have more weight on the knees, right? So you can fold your mat. So we wanna create as much comfort in the rest of the body to support the back bend, because our purpose here is to back bend the body, but if our knees are hurting, then we're, we're losing that, that purpose for why we're in this pose. So knees are comfortable, right? So you can try here, and you can lift up and walk the hands to the heels, or you can try from here. Try one or the other. If it doesn't feel right, try the other way. So to create less bend in the spine, less range of motion to get into that back bend, you can tuck the toes that the heels are closer in reach for you. And then if you want more, you can just extend the toes. So this should feel like a great pose in your body. Your back feels wonderful. And if it doesn't, if there's any pinching, come up with the hands. Take an inhale, let's take a child's pose and then we'll do that again. So really feel the back body open with breath. and then walk the hands towards the knees. So this is a great pose, not only to help create better posture in the body, but it opens us up in this part of ourselves. So when we're closed down and we're just kind of hiding ourselves, our posture turns into more of a, of a flexion of the spine. So when we can open the front body, open up our heart, we actually create better posture. So more reason to have an open heart, right? Creates better posture. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, and you can choose how you wanna get into it. I've given you some tools to work with, see which one works for you best. We're holding here for five breaths. Femur bones, forward, reach those bones forward in front of you. Tuck the tailbone and lengthen the low back. Even though there's bending happening, you're still feeling a sense of lengthening. No tension in the neck or back. If there is tension, you're gonna feel that and you're gonna feel uncomfortable in your upper back. So really let the neck release in the upper back. You can come up out of this by just contracting the belly. If you need support, take your hands to the tops of your glutes to come out. Inhale. Exhale, child's pose. Anytime you do a back bend, you always want to come back and do flexion for the spine. Circle your arms back behind you, rabbit pose. Lift the hips up, tuck the chin. So look at your belly button or your pelvis. And then if you would like, crown of the head comes down. It's wonderful if you can get the crown of the head down. If you can't, that's okay. You may need to widen the knees a little bit. But as soon as you press the head down, what happens is that you can lift the hips up and you can create more space between the scapula because when we're in back bends, we're pulling the scapula in and shoulders are down. So we want to feel the release in the upper back if we're doing back bends. So this is that time for you to really breathe to your scapula. Picture your scapula like wings. So you want to picture the breath like wind moving underneath the scapula, creating space and releasing tightness. Ah. 
All right, hands to the earth, tuck the toes, balancing squat, come to the toes. This is a fun one. And then we will come to thinker pose. <laughs> so interlace the fingers and let your chin rest. So since our focus today was mindfulness, there was a lot of practice of um, just getting into the body. One of the best ways that we can become present in our day is just tapping into the breath. So such a wonderful tool that we have for us at any moment. So just contemplate maybe how your mind feels a little bit different, how you feel more present in your body. And then release your hands down, extend through the legs. If your mat's folded, you can straighten that mat out. And then bend the knees, come all the way up to standing. Let's take the feet wide and really release a little more in the back. We'll finish our practice today with wheel pose. So inhale up to the sky, exhale. Let's actually take the toes out, heels in, and then circle the arms around and really feel the stretch for the side body, the spine, creating more lubrication in the joints with movement and breath. So this is definitely a cleansing process. You'll wanna make sure you get tons of water before, well, not necessarily before, <laughs> a little bit before. You don't wanna to have to be run into the bathroom during your practice. So afterwards is a great time to flush the body out with water. And reverse. You may be wondering how much water do I drink to help release this? And there's different thoughts on that. I think the most common one I've heard is take half of your body weight and that's how many ounces you should be drinking in a day. All right, let's keep moving. We're going to do a crow pose and this will be a flexion of the spine. And then after crow, we'll work our way into wheel. So flexion of the spine, we're feeling contraction in the belly. So in yoga, we talk about bandhas, and bandhas have an energetic quality to them, and they also have a physical um, purpose. So when we create a bandha in our body, we're holding energy and also holding um, on a physical level, those muscles surrounding that bandha. So for now, for this posture, you wanna feel there's three that we generally talk about in yoga, pelvic floor muscles, belly, and throat. So throat we won't worry about right now. Belly, so what you wanna feel is a scooping out of the belly. I think of like carving out a pumpkin. So carve out your belly like a pumpkin and then pull your pelvic floor muscles in and up. And then bend your knees, keep that pulling in. And if it releases a little bit while you're working into this, no big deal. But once you take the toes away, which we're going to attempt, <laughs> then you'll wanna connect with those bandhas again, okay? So before we lift the toes, we're setting up the pose and if you take the hands in closer, of course, side to side, you may feel a little less balanced. So you could take the hands wider, a little bit further than shoulder width distance. Bend the elbows and work the knees up the triceps. Okay, are we ready? Let's give it a try. So we're feeling those muscles, those bandhas pull in to help support the lift. So in this pose, you can lift your hips way high or not, okay? For some people, it helps to get the hips super high first. And then the only thing about lifting the hips too high is that you may feel this feeling of you're gonna fall forward, and you may. <laughs> so it might be nice to grab a cushion <laughs> at this point if you're new to this pose. It's a practice, again, it's finding the balance 
between how high you lift the, the hips or how low you keep the, the hips when you go into this pose. Let's try again. So lean into the triceps. Doesn't matter if you lift the toes or not, but if you can start practicing training those muscles to contract, eventually you're going to get into this posture. And this wrist may be a little bit uncomfortable. Make sure that you let them rest and then really claw the floor. Feel the pads of your fingertips and your knuckle pads press down firmly. And that will engage more of the forearm muscles. Here we go. Find your breath. And come down, awesome. Shake out the hands. Take your left knee over to meet right and have a seat. Whoo, shake out the legs. And let's extend into Dandasana pose, staff pose. Press your heels into the earth, flex your toes. And my favorite word, I just can't wait to say it every day, <laughs> is flointing the foot. I don't know why, I just love this word, but flointing the ankle is not an ex complete extension or flexion of the ankle, it's in between, but there's muscular energy. So notice if I have my, my, my ankle in that position, I can let it just float out in space. And I can also create more energy and contraction in the legs by putting purposefully more attention in reaching the pads of the knuckles away from my knee, okay? So I can soften it and I can create lots of muscular energy. So releasing that leg down, pointing the ankles, <laughs> love it. Take an inhale to lengthen the spine and then exhale, come into a fold. So if you have a strap, you could wrap it around your feet or you could come to a big toe hold. Peace fingers go to the big toes and you're just gently folding the body. Take an inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, hands come behind your hips. Bring one knee up, other knee up, and tabletop. Inhale to come down. If you need to roll the wrists out for a moment, do that. Exhale, hips to the sky. Tight glutes. Picture your low back lengthening though. Awesome, release your hips. All right, we are taking both legs folded underneath the body. If you have sensitive knees, what you would want to do is place a block or a bolster under your hips. So after you've bent that right leg, take left leg and tuck it under. So you can start with sitting on your heels, just like in hero's pose. And just depending on the comfort of the knees, you'll walk the legs out and then have this space where you can move the hips <clears throat> between the heels. So you'll know if the quadriceps or the joints are too tight because the knees will pop up. So press the knees down and you can lift the hips up from here, okay? So now you're in a position where you can really determine if you need a block or something under you because your knees will be hurting. They should not be hurting in this pose. You should feel a great stretch for your quads. So we're just working our way back. Everybody goes to a different point here. You may just come to the, the forearms. You may lie all the way back. And me, after doing yoga for 10 years, I'm pretty convinced that this is as far as I'm gonna go ever and that's okay. It also depends on where the leg bone, where the femur bone 
is connected in the hip? Is it further forward or back? That's also gonna determine how far back you can go into this pose or how wide your splits are. So it's not always just flexibility. All right, so start to come out of the pose. Let's come forward. Stack your hands, and this is just a really nice nurturing child's pose because we're, I didn't forget, we're doing wheels still. Okay, so stack the hands, forehead comes down. Take a few Buddha breaths, so fill up your belly. From my background, a dance background, it was always so important to pull the core in, pull, pull, pull. And when we don't let the belly rest and really just breathe to our belly, we can create digestive issues and issues for the, uh, with the organs. So we wanna make sure that we're nurturing the belly with breath. So take two more breaths in this pose. All right, press into the earth. I love yoga because it's so accepting of where we're at. So as we go into this pose, which is another advanced challenging pose, just allow yourself to go where you need to go today. Maybe you can do will normally and maybe today it doesn't happen and that's all right. So let's lower down our spine and walk the heels in enough that when we are ready to push off, we can feel like the legs can really get a good pressure into the earth versus here where it's like, it doesn't feel like the legs can support us as well when they're out this far. So pull the heels in towards the hips. Tuck your tailbone enough that the low back flattens, okay? So if you have any spinal issues, opt out of this pose, okay? What you would want to do instead is bridge pose, this pose, okay? So you've got an option to work with there. Take your hands up and then tuck your fingertips under your shoulders, okay? So here's a, another angle for you to see. And then we'll pull the elbows not completely in, but you're feeling this moving towards midline, yeah? Okay, so the first thing we do is we go to the crown of the head. If that's uncomfortable for your neck, immediately come out, okay? Put pressure into the earth to lift the head and release. If you can hang out there for a few breaths, then you're practicing straightening the arms. Okay, you may already be in this pose and that's fine, just breathe. If you're, this is your first time, be really gentle, be very cautious and aware. Okay, so we press into the earth, come to the crown of the head. Notice the spine, notice the neck, there should be no pain whatsoever. You wanna feel like the knees are slightly pulling in to midline. Glutes are lifted. If you wanna move further, straighten the arms. Remember the femur bones lifting up and away. Then tuck the tailbone, then create space, space, lengthen in the spine. I'm actually kind of proud of myself that I can talk in this pose, because <laughs> this is tough. But if there's no pain, more of a, maybe a strength, a muscular burning, that's okay. We can stay here and breathe. You wanna come out yet? <laughs> I think I do. You can just release the head now. Oh, good work. Oh, that's a good pose to open the front body. Roll your wrists out. Be proud of yourself too, whatever you did. Maybe it was just lifting the hips up. Be proud that your body was willing to do that for you today. Shake out the hands, pull the knees in. Awesome work. Close the eyes. 
observe your thoughts. Without placing any labels on the thoughts, let your thoughts be thought of <laughs> as your teacher today. What can you learn from the thoughts that came up during your practice? Let's go into a spinal twist. Tee up the arms. Take the feet wide. Pinky toes come off of your mat. And then just allow the knees to flow over to the side. So this feels great, but if you need more, you're taking that right leg and as you do this, pay attention to your right shoulder. Keep it pressing down. And once it starts to lift, back the knee away. Okay, keep pressing that shoulder down. And then bending right knee. Gentle pressure for the low back. Oh, such a wonderful, nurturing, loving pose. Close your eyes. So wonderful for the spine and the organs intestines so good for the mind too. rotate your face towards your extended arm but close your eyes if you don't feel comfortable closing your eyes you can keep them open it's all about creating more comfort in the twists and in the bending and in the holding of these intense poses tee up the arms other side So just notice if you need to take the leg over or not. Rotate the head so that the neck feels that nice twist. And then coming up, and give yourself a huge hug, lift the head. Awesome work and down with the legs moving into shavasana this the word is actually spelled s-a-v-a-n-a-s-a -A -A -A. so savasana i like the sh part i don't think that it's meant to be called shavasana i think it's savasana but that sh kind of uh is a reminder for us to to quiet down the mind, to quiet down the body, the thoughts, our energy, just slow everything down. Give yourself this time to really let go. Let your body become more heavy. Let your jaw drop down to the back of your throat. Let your eyeballs fall heavy into their sockets. Let the muscles of the face melt down to the back of your head. Thank the mind for working through this practice today in observing the thoughts, letting go of egoic thoughts, coming into grace into stillness that's always there for us to tap into feel the stillness towards the back of your head and take that stillness awareness to your heart feel the heart open and expand with the breath and let that breath that stillness extend into your extremities all the way to the toes and fingers. End your practice with a soft smile. And you are completely welcome to stay in Shavasana as long as you would like to. You will receive more benefits from this practice if you can give yourself at least five minutes in this pose. I'm going to come out, but again, you're welcome to stay there. Rolling over to the left side body. Taking your right hand to the earth, 
open your eyes to a half gaze. And then cross the legs. Easy pose, hands to heart. Softly close the eyes. Close your eyes and acknowledge your practice. That it doesn't have to be perfect. There's no real uh, definition of, of perfection in yoga. It's just what is. It's just we're all on our own path and we're all going to experience the poses differently and they're going to look differently. So really just honoring that today. Honoring the mind. Honor yourself for giving yourself some space in between your thoughts. And feeling the mind rest from all the busy thoughts. So we always close with namaste. So we're acknowledging the light, truth, peace, and love within, and acknowledging that in others. And as we continue to practice that, it grows. So blessings on your journey in finding namaste. Thank you again. Namaste.